Hey, what's up you guys? It's RC Lee here. I just wanted to very quickly put this video out because I was working on my Arma Granite 4x4 V3, the brushless 3S version, and uh, I had my motor out and I was kind of cleaning everything up and I noticed that the bearings inside were seemed to be kind of worn, at least on this outer edge by the shaft. Uh, dirt can kind of get in through here. And there's two bearings in a motor like this. There's one here on the end cap and one on the other end here. I've already taken the screws out, as you can see here. But uh, it was getting a little bit of clicking. Not sure if you can hear that, but that clicking noise was making kind of a rattling, uh, like almost a vibration on the car. So if you're getting this type of noise and you can tell that it's the motor when it's running, if it's vibrating, you put your fingers on it, you can kind of feel this vibration. And it's very common, uh, dirt and dust gets in there and eventually they go bad. These are a metal shielded bearing that's in there. Now I've already taken the three little screws out. Um, to get those three screws out of the motor is actually really easy. It's just a one and a half millimeter um, hex head on these. They're really tiny and small, be very careful. Uh, they're easy to strip. You do not want to strip these screws. Uh, but take your time, take these three screws out of these holes. Uh, then the end piece should come off pretty easily like that and there's going to be a bearing in there now this one on mine is perfectly fine it was clean and uh, there was no issues that little noise you just heard click be careful because there is this spacer kind of washer type thing and there's also you guys can see in there a another bent washer now this looks like and you may think it's just trash and you might throw it away accidentally not even knowing but this piece here is actually a curved bent washer and it's supposed to be like that. It's not damaged. It's supposed to be like that. And then there's this spacer here and it's very difficult to tell, but one of these edges is beveled. I know that's not quite in focus because I'm probably too close, but one side of this has a slight bevel. This side is flat and this side there has just a slightly beveled edge around it. That beveled edge side is the edge that faces out. Now I didn't notice this because they fell out the first time I took this motor off just like they did this time so be very careful. I had to take a different motor apart on another truck that has the exact same motor to know what's the right way because I looked online and I could not find one diagram or any type of technical breakdown even from Spectrum. Uh, they, it's just not available anywhere so just be careful when you take these apart that you don't lose these tiny pieces uh, and when you put it back together Basically this curved piece, I put the bend side, like if it was a smiley face, it'd be an unhappy face, I guess. I put that facing down. So not a smiley face facing up and putting it on, I'd put it down. And that's the first piece that goes on. So the curved washer goes down on your motor. Then you put the spacer goes on top of that. Now be sure you put that beveled edge on top. You want that beveled edge on top and the reason why is because on the actual bearing itself is a center piece and that center piece rests on there as it spins. Now if you flip it the other way what will happen is you'll start wearing on the metal shield. So that piece will overextend. I can actually kind of maybe show you guys on the video here. Uh, it will kind of extend beyond that spot and we'll start rubbing on the metal shielding. So. You want that beveled edge to be facing up so that when this cap is on top coming down, the bearing doesn't start to wear on the shielded part. So to, re to recap, uh, you want to put that washer on there, smiley face down, and you want beveled edge up on this spacer. And then you want to put the cap back on, on top like that and screw it in. Now, the part that I am replacing, that's just the order of those two pieces. So if you can't figure it out, I couldn't find it anywhere online. I had to take another motor apart to figure it out. Just know that that's the way that it came factory from, from the factory. The second piece that I am going to replace and that I want this video to actually be about is this piece here. Now, when you take this out, what happens is there's still a bearing on the other side of this and that was the one that was actually bad and so what I used to push this out was simply an Allen wrench now this will destroy the bearing but you know if you can replace the bearing who cares now if you can't get underneath it like that at first 
just get a really tiny flathead screwdriver. I know this isn't a flathead, but just get it underneath that. You can see I kind of got a little bit of marking on the edges here to get this, but it's pretty difficult to get out, but just try to get underneath that and, and start prying that out just a little bit and it'll start to come out pretty easily from there and then it'll pop out. Um, once you get that bearing out, you can replace it obviously. This one was completely destroyed as you can see here. Uh, mostly from me messing with it in a couple times to kind of put it back together. So I decided to order 10 of these bearings um, in a set. I got this brand here, TRB RC. Um, the reason I decided to do this is I could have got a ceramic set, um, like a hybrid bearing that might be better, but I figure it's going to get dirt in there again anyways. Uh, just because of the design of the motor, um, it's possible for things to get through that side hole. So my thought was, since I run in dust and sand a lot, just get a couple extras because that bearing is probably going to go out a couple more times and it's nice to have a brand new one in there. For the cost of 10 of these uh, is exactly the same as buying that hybrid ceramic bearing. The other main difference was it would have taken a couple weeks to get the other one and this one came in two days. So the other issue I had was finding information on what bearing. Um, now, if you have the newer Arma, and I'm not sure if it's V2 or V3 when they switched, but the new ones now, you need a five by 16 by five is the bearing that you would use in the front of the motor that we're replacing today. So about this size. And the other one on the other side is actually smaller. I'm not sure if you guys can tell the difference there, but the one on the back side is five by 13 by four. Whereas the one that we're replacing today is five by 16 by five uh, on this side here, the stem side that sticks out of the motor. So basically if you have the older version, you're gonna have two five by 13 by fours. If you have the newer version of the Arma, um, you're going to have one five by 16 by five and one five by 13 by four. So basically they made the outer bearing that goes where the shaft is. This one that's went out this time, they made it a larger bearing. So just make sure you have the same size bearings. If they're the same size, they're both probably going to be five by 13 by four. If they're different sizes, you're going to have one of each five by 16 by five and five by 13 by four. So that was difficult to figure out too. It took a lot of time for me to, to find all this out. So if you guys appreciate this, um, I couldn't find this information anywhere, online, on YouTube, anywhere. So if you guys appreciate this, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like uh, or even subscribing if you aren't subscribed. I do a lot of videos like this as well as bashing and uh, I enjoy sharing my knowledge. So if you appreciate it, I'd appreciate it if you give it a like. Okay, so the final step here, we've gotten the old uh, bearing out of the can. Now the issue is out of the old bell cap, I guess they call it, or end cap. Uh, I cleaned out, there was a little bit of debris on the inside of there. I cleaned that out as, as best I could. So now we're just going to take one of the new bearings here. Now I also recommend you get metal shielded bearings. A lot of people think that rubber shielded are better and they are for your truck where it doesn't get hot. Uh, but in something like a motor where it gets really hot, the rubber can melt. And that's why they make metal shielded bearings um, because the rubber won't hold up. So if you put a rubber shielded bearing in here, you're probably gonna have problems. Just a heads up. Okay, so once I have that in there, I just kind of want to, I'm using the, the shaft from the granite uh, 3S to just kind of line it up so that it's straight up and down. And then this is kind of nice because it's a plastic end and it kind of helps it uh, seat itself in there, but you basically just want to get that seat down in there as much as possible without damaging it. And then once you get that in there, we can go ahead and put the stator and rotor, I guess, back in here. Now it's really hard because the magnetism is going to try to make it jump around on you. So uh, you're going to have to kind of find the center piece. Okay, and then once you get that shaft put through there, you're going to want to come up and get an area where you can lightly press on the bottom of the shaft. Make sure it's not anything that's going to get damaged or that's going to actually damage your motor as well. Um, and that will click it in right there. The bearing will seat. Okay, so now it's still going to be stuck to the edge because it's, it's a magnet. And that's why it's so important. These bearings are so important to hold it perfectly in place because if it moves just to one side or the other, it'll magnetically stick, obviously. So 
It's very important for these bearings to be, I mean, just the slightest amount of deviation of slight wear on a couple of the ball bearings and it won't rotate properly and you'll get a lot more friction a lot more heat and you'll be surprised how much it'll affect the performance of your motor okay so at this point you want to put the curved washer with the smiley face down or the curve bending downward towards the motor then you want to put on this spacer or thick washer i guess you could say with the beveled edge facing up ideally and then to finish it off, you put the end cap with the bearing. If you need to replace this one, there's a trick where you can put little pieces of breadcrumbs in there. And some people use the other side of this or this end and push down on it. A little tiny breadcrumb in there and you, you push down. And you put a little tiny breadcrumb in, you push down a little further. Another breadcrumb, push down further. Breadcrumb, push down further. And I'll slowly raise the bearing up. It goes underneath the bearing and it pushes the bearing up and out. It's called the breadcrumb trick. If you haven't seen it google it there's a video or two i may make another video on that as well uh, but i didn't want to damage this bearing because i didn't need to take it out it works perfectly it's also protected at the back side of the motor so it doesn't get as dirty so anyways um finishing up here i'll just put this piece on here making sure you line it up make sure all your spacers are on there and you're gonna have to kind of fight that magnetism to get this to click in to just the right spot Okay, and then you may need to push down a little bit to seat that bearing in the top. There you go. Now the bearing is completely seated. Just give it a lot of force so that it's perfectly evenly seated inside there. Now the new bearing is pressed up into this end here. You don't even need to take this piece off. All this sits flush. Now the motor spins perfectly freely. There's no noise. I mean, the cap is still a little loose, I haven't put the screws in, but now there's no noise on that shaft at all. It spins freely, makes no noise. And so that's how you work on the Spectrum. Now this is a SPMX SM2000 by Spectrum. It's the motor that comes in the V3 granite. And I believe in the Sentin and Typhon and all of the, all of the newer Arma stuff. So very interesting. There's nothing online about these motors. You can't find any manuals about it. I haven't been able to find anything. So this was pretty difficult to research, but like I said, along with having another motor on hand that's identical, I was able to kind of figure these things out. But anyways, thanks for watching. I know this video might not apply for everyone, but if you've ever had a motor that sounds like it's going out and you don't want to replace it because they're almost $100 for a motor like this, then get yourself a set of metal shielded bearings and make it run like new again. The They are kind of expensive. So this was, I think, $13 or so, $10 or $13. And the ceramic hybrid ones are about $10 a piece. I don't know if you need to buy those. I have a set of 10 now, so if I need to put more in, I can. And, you know, they're about a dollar a piece. So... It's definitely worth doing. It's a great upgrade. It's a way to make your motor last longer. It's really the only other two moving parts because this doesn't touch anything. It floats magnetically in between the housing and uh, these bearings do all the work. It's just electricity and magnetism. So if you can replace the bearings, you can make these motors theoretically last. I mean, it should last forever. There's no reason unless you damage it that the motor should really ever go bad. Um, there's, you know, you can rewind them and different things like that. But for the most part, these motors should last quite some time. So that being said, I hope you appreciate it. I'm going to slide this heat sink back on and put all this back together and put the pinion back on. Be sure when you do that, you put this clip back on if you have the newer version and the three screws. Again, take your time. Don't destroy this stuff because it's very, very delicate. But if you appreciate this, don't forget to like and subscribe.